Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Thursday, January 18, 2024. I pray that the Lord will be with you this morning. I pray that you will have a wonderful day. I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you as you continue throughout the day. Our reading this morning comes to us from John chapter 8, reading verse 1 to 11. And it says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, verse 2, And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and sat down, and taught them. Verse 3, And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had sat her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Verse 5 Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? Verse 6 This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. Verse 7 So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. It, and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Verse 9 And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the least. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. 10 When Jesus lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? Eleven and last, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And I say, Amen. And as we listen to the word this morning, may we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us our thoughts and our consciences as we seek to follow the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now, this is a story that we are well familiar with, many of us, the woman that was caught in adultery. Now, this woman, as I said, she was caught in adultery in the very act and the Pharisees and the elders, the leaders of the, of the time or of the church of the time, they brought this, this woman to Jesus because they are always trying to catch Jesus in a trap. So they are always trying to tempt him. They are always trying to set him up something so they can have something to say against him something bad to say against him or so they can accuse him of something and so here a scenario or a situation presented itself and they they thought to themselves that they would use this opportunity to get jesus now they brought the woman to jesus and told jesus what happened and then asked jesus what will he do about it jesus stooped down in the sand and started to write now as he wrote they keep asking him what will he do or how they should go about it right trying to set a trap for him now jesus come back up and say he that is without sin cast the first stone at her and then he stooped back down, as he, the scripture said, and started to write again. And by the time that he got up back, there was no one except the woman that was there. 
but he's too stooped down to write you know everyone start to leave one by one right till it was only the woman that was left and jesus asked the woman where are the accusers and she said there was none and jesus said neither do i i don't condemn you either just to note do you realize that it's only the woman that was brought before jesus where is the man that she was committing adultery with she couldn't have been committing adultery by herself it must have been with someone but the man was not brought only the woman so you see the trap that they are they are trying to set for jesus and maybe it was even one of the leaders themselves too we don't know because the bible didn't really say it. but it goes to show that people are always trying to destroy other people's life and to protect their own self now what's the moral of this story there are many times we try to be judge and jury over others we search out other people mistakes and when others fall down or when they make a mistake when they sin we stand ready to execute them we stand ready to tear them down we stand ready to to, to rip them apart to let them know that how oh, wrong they were and tear them down further and forgetting that we ourselves are not guiltless we are all guilty of one thing or another we have our own faults and so that is why the bible says that we should be careful or we judge others or or we quick to pass judgment on others forgetting that we ourselves need forgiveness so we can't set up ourselves as gods over people our lords over people that's not our place i am not saying that if somebody does something wrong we should never correct them that's far from what i'm saying we must use the bible's approach to deal with these situation the bible says that when a person falls or a person sin we should carefully try to restore that person so yes you're going to reprove the person but you'll do it in kindness and in love don't condemn the person don't treat the person with scorn don't alienate the person and i realize that we as believers sometimes we love to do that i don't know where we get this idea that we can pass judgment on anybody that's not our place we should be praying for each other and helping each other to grow spiritually so so when a brother or a sister fall down and do something wrong we should try to encourage the person speak to them kindly speak to them kindly about the matter let them know in a kind way and i keep stressing this because some of us we really do not know how to talk to other people and how to approach other people and to deal with situation with tact and with wisdom and that is why sometimes some folks are so on guard against anyone coming to them and correcting them because what they are afraid of being persecuted and so we have to be careful so yes you can turn a blind eye to the thing if a person do something wrong yes you should correct the person or you should try to deal with the matter but at the same time you must remember that you are not god and it's never your responsibility it's never my responsibility to cast any form of judgment on anyone we should try to help the person not to make that same mistake again try to restore them so they can grow in the favor of god i am not sinless 
you are not sinless. None of us can say that we are sinless. The Bible says that we are all sinners. We were born in sin and shape, shapen in iniquity. And so let us be mindful how we treat others just because they falter. Because how you treat that situation or how you treat that person, you can either make it worse or you can make it better. And so I pray that we will use wisdom, we will be tactful, and we will allow the Holy Spirit to guide us when we are dealing with these things so that at the end of the day, God is glorified and not us. May God continue to bless you and may God continue to keep you as you seek to serve him. In Jesus' name, amen.